Although there have been increased cases of Marburg virus disease in Equatorial Guinea lately, this does not mean that the transmission from an infected individual to a non-infected individual has changed. So let's break down exactly how the transmission of Marburg virus disease happens. The first thing that needs to occur is a spillover event. And this happens from the infected population, the African fruit bat, into the human population. And this typically occurs when an individual comes in contact with an infected bat's feces or their urine. They can then start spreading Marburg virus to other individuals through their bodily fluids. First, either direct contact or indirect contact. An indirect contact can take place through a variety of different surfaces, like tables or cloth that can contain their bodily fluids. So if an uninfected individual comes in contact with those surfaces and those infected bodily fluids, they themselves could become infected with the Marburg virus. And when we talk about bodily fluids, the primary driver here is actually a person's blood. And that's because their blood contains the highest amount of Marburg virus. And this can even occur long after an individual has passed from the disease. And this is really important first for hospitals or clinical settings as healthcare workers who may be treating an infected individual will be at the highest risk but it can also be of concern at burial ceremonies since that virus will still be present in an individual's blood, so handling the body can be extremely important. So as more information about Marburg virus becomes available, and if there's any changes to the scientific information about how it's transmitted, we'll be sure to keep you all informed.